not a hundred percent sure. Uh, okay, here we go. We've got the team names. Oh, we gotta go back to the actual game. Okay, so on the bottom side we have uh, Corey Elliott Yoon versus Nicholas Khan. Uh, also, I apologize in advance for the um, the wrong names since I'm hosting and now commentating. Uh, I don't really have time to change them. So on the bottom we have Gigalith and Porygon Two for Corey. On top we have Muck and Tapu Lele for Nick. Uh, and uh, as we can see, both players um, just started. I think Porygon 2 just took a, um, a, uh, a Psychic Z move, uh, so that's why it's so low. Arcanine is going to switch in for the Muck, going to get off and intimidate against the Gigalith, uh, lowering its attack stat. Uh, not going to make much of a difference for the Porygon 2. Tapu Lele just goes for the Protect, which gives Cory a chance to, um, to recover with his Porygon 2, but actually it looks like it's going to set Trick Room. No, 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 okay. Wow, that's a fast Gigalith, or a very slow Porygon. Um, the Heavy Slam goes into Protect. Porygon 2 avoids being knocked out by the Sandstorm, and uh, I would say that was a pretty good turn for Corey. Um, Hi, Matt. Don't worry. Okay, Matt's here. So while Matt talks about what is in between turns, I'm going to change the names. Well, uh, so um, I didn't I missed that turn there. Uh, do we have Trick Room up, Krell? Can you no, tell, Trick Room is not that? up. Trick Room is not up. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I've missed a little bit here. That's okay. So what well, happened? got a bit of damage. Porygon's got a bit of damage. No yeah. knockouts so far. Porygon took survived a um, Porygon survived so a second Z. So Heavy Slam is going to now uh, come out, take out the Tapu Lele. Uh, so that's a big, and that's also what I've noticed is a very like fast um, Gigalith because it's going before, unless Trick Room is up. Actually, we might have missed Trick Room go up, um, which would actually explain that happening much better than Gigalith being, I don't know, Scarf. Yeah. So, okay, so Trick Room is I'm up. I'm a little bit behind. It. I'm a little bit behind, so I have to refresh the stream, and now I've got an advert going. So no uh, I saw a Will O Wisp onto a Gigalith. Yes, uh, Will O Wisp connected with Gigalith. Lele is knocked out. Um, and I'm just changing some records. Sorry about doing maintenance on like midstream, guys. Got a nice question mark for their records because no, I don't know how the juniors did or how many rounds they played. Anyway, um, okay, so now we have let's see. Uh, Nicholas is going to bring back in his muck, which under Trick Room is probably going to do fairly well against the Burn Gigalith and a Porygon too. Um, Arcanine, though, definitely yeah, that is not going to want to take a rock type attack. Have we seen, we haven't seen <clears throat> Curse on this uh, mark yet, but Curse, uh, Curse would be uh, really cool right now. Yeah. Um, allowing it to uh, boost itself up against this uh, non-damaging Gigalith and the Porygon too. Meanwhile, the Arcanine might want to switch out. Uh, despite it being burnt, it will still do a little bit of damage. The Gigalith yeah. will still be, <clears throat> well, not as much damage as I thought it would do. It is intimidated. Uh, but flinches are still a thing. A critical hit on the muck, that does nothing. And a toxic avoid and a simple poison jab onto probably the uh, Porygon 2 slots. Maybe fishing Ooh. for a poison. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's big. Oh, and Arcanine actually revealing that it's special, going to hit the Porygon 2. And that does... Oh, okay, that was a crit. That does a lot more damage wow, than I was yeah. expecting. This might actually take out the Porygon 2 after the Sandstorm and the toxic damage. So that's a very big turn for Nicholas. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely a little bit unfortunate there, especially with um, no flinches to be seen there. Um, so with, with the poison, the sandstorm, and the critical hit on the flame for uh, that was quite a big turn for uh, Nicholas right here. Yeah, uh, it's going to take a little bit of burn damage. It's still in a Gigalith is still in the position where it can just flinch whatever it uh, feels like. Um, Although Trick Room must, so I think, be running out soon. Yeah, whatever Corey brings out is really going to want some. Wants the Gigalith to pull its weights and uh, actually get some finches. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't. We missed team preview, so we're not really sure what there is. But we do now see Celesteela coming out. Going to be able to. Uh, well, yeah, it's not in the best position. Doesn't really like looking at Arcanine. Yeah, not going to lie. Not going to lie. That's um, Celesteela here. Not sitting too pretty. Um, a knockoff into the Celesteela would get rid of its leftovers as well, which Celesteela really relies on. And I mean. It does mean that if the Celestia does somehow pick up a KO and get a special defense boost, the Arcanine, even with a flamethrower, isn't going to be threatening at all. That's the one problem with a special Arcanine. And we'll but see Celestia, Celestia does protect. Celestia goes for a protect. Arcanine also protecting, possibly 
um, trying to avoid taking any damage. Um, and we see Gigalith actually is going to go ahead and reveal the curse. So it's going to start um, negating the intimidate and the attack reduction from being burned uh, if it can survive long enough. Meanwhile, Muck tries to knock off those leftovers. Gonna not uh, not going to work in the uh, due to the protect and the sandstorm subsides, which um, not going to be a huge difference uh, because Gigalith already resists the special flamethrower anyway. Um, but we also see Trick Room end, and we see the psychic terrain disappear. So, you know, um, yeah, could be a could Everything be a shadow sneak. The psychic terrain, the, ter the the sandstorm, and uh, the uh, and the Trick Room, which means that uh, the, since the Tapalene was knocked out. It won't be able to hit the Gigalith for huge sandless damage. Uh, but so let's see the protect here. So it will be a prime target for a flame thrower and a, and a knockoff. I can't re I can't really see what the Celestia could switch into. <coughs> Obviously, yeah. we didn't see team preview, so right. we're not entirely sure. Um, it's actually just going to take the flamethrower. So let's see how much damage this does. Um, yeah, it's going to do about uh, three fourths. Decent. Celestia will get the lead seed up though. Um, making sure that when Muck probably knocks it off, uh, leftovers here, it does still get some health. Actually, though, it's going to faint. So nope, not happening. That is the end of Celestia. Wow. Didn't really get a chance to do much. But Gigalith gets to do uh, a Continental Crush. Uh, and granted, it's now at, I think, like minus two attack-wise. Um, so this might just hit like the strength of a normal Rock-type move. Um, would be good here to get... Uh, a KO on the Arcanine if possible. Um, not sure if it's going to be able to, though. Um, possibly. With one curse up, even with oh. um, Arcanine doesn't have the best defenses in the world, but yeah, there we go. Arcanine okay. does get knocked out. So that's good. Uh, that this... that definitely keeps um, Corey in this game, although a lot of it's going to depend on what both of their last Pokemon are. Um, I don't think neither of which we know. Um, Nick reveals the Araquanid, though, which is going to be dangerous. great. Oh, but the... But, um, Corey has the Tapu Koko, and um, you know, Arachnid probably will Tapu Koko able... doesn't doesn't really love this position either. I mean, yes, granted, it can knock out the Arachnid, but if Arachnid protects and the Mac, po Mac poison jabs Tapu Koko, I don't think there's any two ways around that. That's a good point. Yeah, so uh, we might see Corey here try to bait out, like wait out the protect from Arachnid. Um, we also don't know. I don't think Corey used the Z move. So for all we know, this could be Gigavolt Havoc Tapu Koko, which would... Uh, no, he just did. He literally just used the uh, Continental Crush. Oh, wait, you're right. Okay, never mind. Good On call. the Arcanine. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, memory is a, th memory is a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think you're right. It, it, that being the case, um, yeah, we see Nick going for that play. Corey does not look super happy about it. Yeah, the Thunderbolt comes out into the Arachnid while Muck goes for a Poison Jab. That's almost certain to get the knockout. Yeah. It does, and now Gigalith, oh, with a crit, but I don't, I don't really think that that necessarily mattered too much. Gigalith does set up a curse, so it is at plus two defense. Um, don't think that'll matter in the long run, but we helps. haven't seen Nicholas's um, Z move. So if it is um, the uh, Watery um, Araquanid, which I'm a bit, quite it was a big a fan psychic of. Z. So he did actually. That oh, was, was there? Yeah, that was how he um, put the uh, Porygon two in such a low health. Ah, okay, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't see that. Yeah, oh, and also it looks stream, like the stream has died. The stream might be it's either buffering or dead. Uh, it's oh, back. No, okay. it's it's back. It's back. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, Gigalith still burns. Let's yeah. see how well it takes a, a liquidation. Uh, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, knock off into the Gigalith does minimal damage, but yeah. here's the liquidation. This is what's going to really matter. Uh, One thirteen HP into twenty three. That's uh, good to note for for future games. Uh, Rock slide, not enough to knock out either of these Pokemon. Wow, is that a crit and on Arachnid? No, no, it's just super effective damage. Right. Um, the burn. But with the burn damage, um, it does stack up eventually. And yeah, I don't think Corey can really take this one back. No, really well played by Nicholas, though. There's no way. Yeah. So uh, normally we would probably talk about what his options are in game two. Um, but we don't know his full team. The four mons that we do know are Teb Coco, Gigalith, Porygon 2, and Celesteela. Um, but, you know, why, uh, that's interesting. I guess Nick wanted to uh, let the Gigalith go down <coughs> due to the burn. Um, so mm. let the animations play out. Unless he's playing to some time. Oh, and it survives Survives with one HP. So Okay. That's interesting to note. Um, yeah. Let's see. 
Um, maybe he's going to take his time so that maybe he can use uh, time to his advantage in the next couple couple games. Yeah. But the handshake comes out. So that's going to be game one. Yeah, Nick Tames takes game one. And uh, we do want to note that this is uh, – uh, um, what was it? What did Nahal call it? It was a APAC final match because it's Nick is from Australia. Uh, a very good player from Australia has won a lot of pretty much everything over there from what I've heard. And Corey – is obviously from Singapore, um, so you know that's nice that no matter who wins this match, the uh, the winner will be taking the title home to the APEC region. Yeah, that is very very true. Um, but now we finally get to see um, team preview, which we yes. did miss in the uh, last game. I did I didn't notice while I was uh, making a salad. I saw uh, so let's <laughs> I saw see. the game suddenly appear. But we've yeah, got we've got Corey nice. here with the um, Garchomp, Gigalith, Celestia, Porygon to. Uh, Tapu Koko, Arcanine, kind of a very, looking like a bit of a good stuffs team. And then we have Nick with the Muck, uh, Araquanid, Porygon 2, Tapu Lele, Arcanine, and Tapu Fini. And they're both quick. They know exactly what they want to do. So not giving us much time to even consider mm. it. They know. No, no time at all. And uh, I guess we'll be seeing these. these. Um, interesting to see how many Pokemon on Corey's side didn't have, really have a chance to actually get anything done. For example, the Celesteela yep. and the uh, Porygon didn't get too much done except for setting up a trick room for a burnt Gigalith. But we, yeah, we just see these leads. Yeah, so we see the double water lead from Nick, the Araquanid and the Tapu Fini, and Garchomp and Tapu Koko from uh, Cory possibly setting up, I mean, it's been a while, I think, since I've seen uh, like Discharge Tapu Koko like with next to Garchomp leads, but that's definitely a possibility. Um, if, if yeah. that is in Although the cards, Arachnid this, could have wide guard. Yeah, that's it's it's dang, it's a dangerous situation if he does decide to discharge. Discharge Vox Side would be a lovely play here, but why you've got to assume that maybe it's Arachnid doesn't have the wide guard. So it's a little bit unsafe. Maybe a double target onto Tapu Fini um uh, could be a could be a big deal. And stream. Um <laughs> with Poison Jab and Thunderbolt, but the stream dies right here uh, as another advertisement pays for me. Um, well, so Araquanid could wide guard, and if we see a Moonblast onto that um, onto that guard chomp, it could, uh, it, it could be going. Uh, is the stream <laughs> yeah, dead? Yeah, it's, it's pretty dead. Um, I'll keep refreshing, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's only so much we can theorize about their leads without knowing... Um, what what moves are on there? Oh, it's back. Okay, so we see a Tectonic Rage on the Tapu Fini. Don't know what Tapu Coco did. Um, possibly damage to Fini? No, no damage. Oh, I think Fini protected. No. Nope. So it's not going to do much damage there. Uh, leftovers are procking, so uh, Araquanid must have also protected. So I'm, I'm just guessing. So it looks like um, Nicholas just decided to scout out what Corey did. We don't know what Tapu Coco did. Um, but that is unfortunate for um, Corey to have burned his Z move already. Uh, he's not... Yeah, that is true. Um, we see Arachnid just switch out in favor of the Arcanine. Now that the uh, Tectonic Rage isn't a threat anymore, um, Garchomp can't uh, one hit K, one hit knock out this uh, Arcanine. Intimidate will reduce the attack, and then a Thunderbolt onto the Arcanine. That's going to do a, a, a no. fair chunk of damage, and Rock Slide following that up. Probably put that in the, uh, in the, to proc its pinch berry, which, uh, let's see what variation. Margo berry activating on the, uh, probably Margo. Uh, Arcanine intends to carry, to carry Margo. But I it's the, uh, Iapapa. Yeah. And the Tapu Fini flinches, uh, which is interesting, because he, we, we could have seen a, a moon blast into this uh, guard shop in this situation here. Yeah, and so I think this is um, not a very good position for Nicholas. Uh, I understand why he wanted to get the Arachnid out of there. He was very threatened. Uh, but a, um, a Thunderbolt and a Rock Slide on either of these Pokemon is probably going to be able to pick up at least one knockout. I think it, a lot might come down to calling the right Protect, because you have to imagine at least one of these Pokemon is going to Protect, while the other one tries to do something to get some momentum back in Nicholas's favor. Yeah, definitely true. Uh, either way, um, Nicholas's Pokemon don't want to be double-targeted. Uh, can we see another double Protect here? But we just see a Thunderbolt. Yeah, and that's going to put Arcanine, uh, into the Arcanine. Yep. well in the range of a Rock Slide. Um, that and will get the, the KO. No. It's back for me, kind of. No. 
Well, oh, he's struggling. At least we're getting this out of the way before the finals of Masters. Technical difficulty. Technical difficulties in Sao Paulo right now. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna refresh again real oh. quick, see if that helps. No, no, it's it's back. I can't get knocked out by the by the rock side and Moonblast, Moonblast into the gut chomp. Uh, not quite enough to knock it out. Leaves it there with 13 HP. And now Tapu Lele looks like it's gonna switch in, resetting the terrain um, to Psychic. It's gonna obviously boost its damage output by a lot. Um, but still, um, Garchomp, even though it's hanging on. Is still threatening flinches, not necessarily big damage. Um, I think at this point, though, you just kind of, well, you, you know, I don't think I don't think that um, Garchomp's going to be able to necessarily get a knockout on either of these Pokemon. Part of me wonders whether it might be a good idea to just protect an Earthquake, then let Garchomp go down and try and pick up a knockout. But actually, Cory just decides he wants to save his Garchomp for later. Um, to brings in Celesteela to take either a Psychic or a Moonblast very well. Tabu Koko protects. I think Corey just wanted to see what Nick is thinking. Psychic comes out into Coco, and I imagine we see the Moonblast. Oh, so he's actually going to double. Um, yeah, so we just see Leftovers recovery. Kind of a kind of a dead turn, but we do get some repositioning from Corey. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe maybe this Tapu Lele uh, is carrying the uh, Choice Scarf item. And if that's the case, Tapu Koko uh, is extremely threatened. It's and a there is no safe switch for the a, for a Tapu... Oh, we have seen a Z move already. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. Uh, but so let's see, can heavy slam Tapu Lele, but at the same time, Tapu Lele has a pretty free um, Shattered Psyche. Then again, Nicholas doesn't want to uh, be reduced to two Pokemon only. Uh, he wants to be... He wants to pick up knockouts without having Tapu Lele get knocked out, unless this Tapu Lele was EV meticulously well to take a Celestia Heavy Slam. Um, it's going to be, it's going to come down to uh, what does Tapu Koko switch into? Does or does Tapu Koko just let itself go down? Um, I don't think the Tapu Koko will just stay, but we should just see the Tapu Lele switch out in favor of the Araquanid. Yeah, Tapu Fini um, will go for we'll a protect take heavy slam. and Thunderbolt into that slot. Well, yeah, I imagine we'll, we will see a Heavy Slam. I think what's also interesting to note, though, is that since losing Arcanine, Nicholas doesn't have anything really to handle Celesteela. Um, so I, I think at, at this point, a Waterium Z is probably um, Nicholas's best bet, but even that can be kind of um, risky. Tapu Koko probably won't be able to pick up a knockout on Araquanid without the terrain on its side, even though it is Life Orb. Um, but yeah, I, I think that Corey has put himself into a really good position. If he can set up some lead seeds with Celesteela, maintain his recovery, um, I would say he has a very good chance to win this game and take it to game three. Hmm. Um, then again, maybe the Tapu Lele is kind of ring the Thunderbolt. Uh, oh, But I, I doubt that. Do we see a protect from the um, Celesteela? Nicholas not entirely happy about that. Wow. Thunderbolt into Araquanid. Uh, does knock it out. Wow. Yeah. That's a strong, strong Tapu Koko. Moonblast, um, though. Let's see if this gets a knockout. Mm. I don't no. think it matters at this point. Yeah, no, not quite. Yeah, I think at this the point, has been done. Celesteela just going to be able to knock out Tabu Lele, I imagine, with a heavy slam, possibly notch a special defense boost, then just uh, drop some lead seeds on Tabu Fini and wait the game out. Hmm. Maybe, maybe Thunderbolt on Tabu Lele, uh, on Celesteela, hope for. A critical hit and a full paralysis. I think that might be his only out. Yeah. Plus, like yeah, that are at best, that are at best like a. Um. Well, Tapu Lele is gonna protect. Um, and let's see, Tapu Koko will knock itself out with a thunderbolt, but does it take Tapu Fini down with it? It just might. Yeah, with a critical hit. So um, that I would say is a pretty favorable trade. Uh, all things considered, not sure that it mattered as we discussed the game was pretty much sealed but um now cory can just heavy slam at his leisure and uh take it to game three yeah yeah i think it, it looks like nicholas hasn't adopted his hasn't adapted his game plan uh, going into game two obviously cory adapted really really well um game one he was he he went for the trick room with gigalith but that didn't work out for him because of the Will-O-Wisp. Um, now, without, you know, 
he didn't really bother with the trick room at all. Uh, and it worked out for him because he was nice and speedy with the Tapu uh, Coco, the Garchomp. Um, Nicholas played well, wasting that uh, Tectonic Rage very early on. Um, but after that, he just, he just didn't adapt properly. Yeah, you know, he didn't preserve his win condition, which was, um, Ar and in both cases, I think it was Arcanine in game one able to burn the um, Gigalith and uh, take out the Celesteela. So I really think, yeah, I mean, looking at looking at that team, really the only thing he has for Celesteela is Arcanine. So um, assuming, I mean, Muck maybe, mm. uh, kind of, if it's a, if, if, you know, if it's like happens to be a curse set, but uh, or possibly Porygon two with a Thunderbolt. But either way, I think that this final game is going to come down to whether or not Cory can knock out the Arcanine and whether or not Nick can protect it, and then it'll kind of come down to. If, if Nick can protect his Arcanine and use it to take out Celesteela, then I think the rest of the game from there can kind of be up in the air. Um, but, yeah, uh, based off that game two, that was much more convincing than a victory that Nicholas got in game one. So um, I think Corey got some good momentum and is, is poised for a potential victory. Yeah, I think Garchomp Celesteela is definitely the dangerous uh, lead that Corey uh, could go for. Tectonic Rage, nothing on Nicholas's team really wants to take that, right. especially since Muck and Arcanine have some, can do something to uh, Celesteela uh, with Flamethrower, Will-O-Wisp, Knockoff combined. Uh, but I don't know, it's just, it's just a little, little bit of a, of a tough one. Nick well, sends out the Tapu Lele and the Arcanine. And we actually see exactly what you talked about, Matt. Garchomp Celesteela putting out a lot of pressure on both of these Pokemon. I mean, honestly, the Intimidate is nice because it, it does weaken both of these physical attackers' uh, damage output, but I don't really think that Tapu Lele, unless it's supremely bulky, and even then it's not going to enjoy taking a uh, an Earthquake or a Tectonic Rage, uh, you know, but um, pretty tough position for Nicholas and uh, going to require some, some Protects and some Switches, if not both. Yeah, I definitely, do, I definitely like this Intimidate um, on Nicholas's end because it does mean the Heavy Slam won't be able to pick up the KO on Tapu Lele, uh, which isn't really relevant right now because... Well, Garchomp's just going to protect, actually, and uh, Arcanine protects as well, so that's good. Next turn, um, Cory can safely Tectonic Rage and with no ground immunities um, and, only, and it's only the only ground resist on the field. Um, something's probably going down to Tectonic Rage. Arcanine takes the, um, or Araquanid takes the Heavy Slam fairly well, but still too slow to be putting off uh, a whole lot of pressure. And, mm. um, you know, even a Waterium Z, that'll pick up a knockout on Garchomp, but um, probably not so Yeah. Bad. You know, I think Celestino ideally wants to switch out. Um, preserve, uh, reset the Intimidate, really. Uh, meanwhile, this Arcanine is this, the most juiciest Tectonic Rage target. Yes. Uh, it will be going down to one unless we see a switch. It uh, could be the Finn. Uh, so, yeah, it, it could be. But at the same time, uh, I, want to see, I want to see uh, Corey try and um, capitalize off um, some sort of switch. But we've seen sad to see the Tapu Lele come out. Uh, maybe it can take a Tectonic Rage. Very much doubt it, though. So Estina just simply protects, not wanting to take a potential Z move at its full force. I, I can't and like we this. see the. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I kind of like this play, though. Um, obviously, it sucks to take a Tectonic Rage and any of your Pokemon, but I think Nick correctly recognized that his Tapu Lele is too slow. Um, it, it Basically, it's not going to be able to do enough in this game because of how threatened it is by Celesteel. And actually, it's very bulky, able to survive. And now the Waterium Z coming out from Araquanid, if that's going into the Garchomp, that could be fairly huge uh, because, it, it again, it, it keeps... Um, it keeps Corey's Arcanine safe, um, you know, unless Gigalith is in the back for Corey. So it is that Garchomp. I think that's. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's a knockout. It's been a while since Araquanid, but. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's knockout. Araquanid, with that water bubble ability, it's so strong. Bacterium Z is a prime, is a prime prime um, item for the Araquanid. Yeah. Um, mm. One thing I really like about Araquanid, actually, it's just it generally has. It's a Pokemon where. If you just put the one same type attack bonus move on it, you're happy with it because right. the rest can be, you can add substitute, you can have toxic, you can have anything. But against this type of Coco, it might want to switch out yet again. 
Yeah, although, again, if he it depends on what his fourth Pokemon is. That might want to take an Electric-type attack a little better. Uh, I don't think you want to switch in the Arcanine here. I think Arachman, it did its job. Um, and uh, it depends on if mm. Gigalith, again, is in the back. But I think at this point, you try to trade... Um, you try to trade Lele for Coco if you can. Uh, yeah, Arachnid... you could try and do that. Arachnid protects, not wanting to take a Thunderbolt. Yep, Thunderbolt. A Thunderbolt into... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, th yeah. good play by Nicholas here. Yep, getting that Moonblast off into Coco and special attack drop. Ooh. But Tapu Lele will go down due to the Heavy Slam. Um, so now they are tied up uh, in terms of Pokemon. And uh, Celsius will get a Beast Boost. Special Defense is going to help against the Flamethrower, um, but a yeah. second Intimidate, um, if Arcanine does come out, is not going to be uh, the best. But we At see this the point, with the Tapu Lele gone, um, Celestino really just ideally uh, wants to start setting up Leech Seeds. Um, it doesn't really need to use its offensive moves anymore. Araquinid doesn't have the Z-move anymore. Nothing can really do major damage to Celestino apart from the uh, Arcanine. So I think right now, Nicholas is going to have to invest the time into knocking out the partners and then slowly doing chip chip damage to Celestina. And instead, we just see the uh, Arachnid switch. Yep, Arcanine comes in, getting a second Intimidate onto Celestina, so those Heavy Slams are barely going to be doing anything. Celestina, though, just protects, doesn't want to take a knockoff. Um, uh, Tapu Koko goes for a Thunderbolt into the Muck slot. Not going to do a whole lot of damage, doesn't even bring it below into Figgy Berry range. And a knockoff, ooh, into the Celestina. That um, was, I think, both players were maybe predicting uh, some different targets and uh, didn't didn't quite work out for either of them. But um, yeah. what would be really interesting here is uh, I don't think we've seen the fourth move on Nick's Arcanine. If that's extreme speed, that would come extremely in extremely handy right here. Yeah, extreme extremely handy speed. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. Uh, very much indeed. Um, the Tapu Koko is also in flamethrower range, mm -hmm. so. Maybe if he wants to invest, if Nicholas wants to invest his time into knocking off the, the leftovers on Celestia, he can do because the Arcanine can pick up the KO. But instead, Celestia just switches out. Yep, so Gigalith is going to come in, set up the sand, boosting its special defense from an already resisted Arcanine flamethrower. And actually, Corey just wants to kind of reposition, focus more on that, protect. Um, Arcanine does go for the flamethrower. This is going to do almost nothing to Gigalith, I imagine. Uh, best scenario could notch a burn. And it does. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's got to be heartbreaking. Poison Jab comes into the Protect, not going to do yeah. any damage. Um, the upside, though, for Nicholas is that he did see that a neutral Continental Crush um, mostly took out an Arcanine. So after, I think after a Thunderbolt and a Continental Crush, you could get rid of it and then um, bank on Celesteela to win you the rest of the game. But um, Yeah, you know what? I think... Muck ideally wants to protect. The sandstorm damage Sandstorm damage will allow it to pop the figgy berry right. without it being at 51% health. Right. Uh, Arcanine can switch out for the Araquanid. It's, it's kind of done its job. Um, and Arcanine ideally wants to be preserved for not only just for the Intimidate, but also it doesn't want any damage going into the one-on-one -on -one versus Celesteela. Um, so Tapu Koko, it'll only, it's only got one more move under its belt because with the life orb damage and the sandstorm damage it will knock itself out gigalith is burnt not in a great position either celestial in the back is, is is what wins it nicholas really needs to switch out this arcanine right now yeah i mean it, the arachnid is nice for the um for the gigalith here but i don't think that's the most important thing um muck does protect gigalith also protects let's see what the tapu coco does goes for the thunderbolt into the gigalith or into the muck slot and now Arcanine is free to get a free flamethrower off and pick up the knockout. Uh, and that honestly might have just decided the game right there. Um, although, yeah, wow. I don't know. It, it's not. I don't know that it's necessarily over. Um, Muck does proc its Figgy Berry though, uh, bringing it basically back up to full health. Um, I, I think that the the only if if Nicholas can get Araquanid in for free and hit that Gigalith with a Liquidation, then I'm pretty sure he's got the game sealed up no matter what. But um, Gigalith is a Rock type, so if uh, Nicholas just, or if uh, Corey just goes for Rock Slides, oh, he's just gonna forfeit. Okay, no, maybe not. I don't think he should forfeit. I think this this still a sort of an out. Right. Uh, the burnt Gigalith is unfortunate, unfortunate. I think Celestina 
it shouldn't have been switched out earlier because it really did like its its position with the boosted special defense from the earlier beast boost. Oh wow! We see, some... see Elite Seed right into the Arcanine. Nicholas playing out of his mind, and he in prison. Yep. No more protecting here. Um, oh, and Muck dodges the a... rock slide. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, no not more great for Corey in the stream. Okay, it's back. It's good. I always panic when that happens. In, but... in prison, shall in prison, shall Paolo. Without the protect, it means that Nicholas can feel very safe in just double targeting this Celestia until he gets a free switch into the Aquanid. Yep. Um, and uh, I mean, in a way, that kind of frees Corey up to maybe go for that Z move, um, but you know, because he knows that he's not going to yeah. have to worry about the Gigalith. Flamethrower doing a lot to Celestia, as we saw actually in the last game. A knockoff plus a knockoff knock was enough to take up the to pick up the knockout before. Oh, actually, that must have been a roll because this time Celestia survives with eight HP. Rock slide coming out, not doing a whole lot because of the burn. Um, yeah, uh, that the sandstorm takes Ar uh, Arcanine down below half, but at this point, um, Celestia can't protect, and it'll go down to a uh, go down to another flamethrower, and then, like you said, just a matter of time. So Raccoon can get in and close out the game. I don't think yeah. all the curses in the world were still right, save that Gigalith. Yeah. Uh, very unfortunate that Leech Seed miss. Maybe there was a t the tiniest out, but very much doubt it. We saw how much the Flamethrower did. Uh, Sinistida really would have liked that special defense boost from earlier. Yeah, so that Sinistida was... does go down, unable to protect thanks issue. to the Imprison. And uh, yeah, I think Poison Jab and eventually Liquidation is just going to finish finish the game, the game off. Yep. Yeah, um, no, Rock Slide still not even, I mean, that probably won't even, uh, that did okay to Arcanine, but uh, not going to be able to take it out and just puts in um, Aya Papa Berry range. And uh, yeah, I think at this point they're shaking hands. The forfeit is uh, bound to come out. Though Corey looks like, you know, all things considered, doesn't look too upset, being a good sport about it. And congratulations to Nick Khan for um, being the uh, juniors. Sao Paulo international champion. Yeah, well, very well done by Nicholas. I think well done by Corey as well. Uh, you know, you can't underestimate how good these uh, these players are uh, in the junior division. I'm always impressed by the level of play by yeah. uh, these kids who are essentially so young and they understand the well the game a lot better than some adults <laughs> sometimes <laughs> as well. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, um, either way, neither of them will be bitter about being able to take the trophy home to the APAC region. Uh, Nick Khan, uh, very good sport about it. They're both signing a slip. Um, but yeah, fantastically played by Nick here. Yeah, he's looking relieved, happy to be the winner.